introducing our new faculty reports to give us another glimpse at each one of them. Um, so um, I'll just start down through our list. You know, 17, all my stars. This is terrific because anytime any faculty member is leaving, I always think, how will we replace this great person who provided such wonderful service? So true to the mission of SBU. And then we look at this wonderful list of folks that we that have come to, to work at SBU and it's just terrific. I'll start at the beginning. Um, we have a, a, I know that there's some nursing folks not here due to accreditation urgencies on that campus. So I think that's the case with Cozy Bagley, right? I don't think Cozy is here. Uh, assistant Professor of Graduate Nursing. Levi Bridge, Instructor of Business Administration. There's Levi. And stand up. Why not? <laughs> Everybody knows Levi. And then there's this person, Angie Brown Peterson, Assistant Professor of Business Administration. Welcome back. Thank you. Great. Caden Clancy, Lecturer and an Academic Advisor for the Springfield Campus. There's Katie way in the back. You know, Allison hired a number of these folks this summer. And I got to hire two more yesterday. <laughs> but uh, some of them I didn't meet until actually the new faculty workshop yesterday. So, Katie, good to have you. Coleman Crenshaw, instructor of theater. I didn't meet Coleman until yesterday. Angie Ham, instructor of social work. There's Angela. I've known Angela for many years, but got to hire her. Kylie Hine, lecturer of athletic training, is with soccer, I believe. Dawn Katzer, instructor of art. Abby Kimberly, instructor of university studies. Angie Gilmore, Kimberly. Jennifer Maloney, coordinator of behavioral sciences for Mountain View and San Francisco. Got to meet her at Saturday's Agile workshop. Yes. Kevin Markham, instructor of university studies. <coughs> Kathy Smith, instructor of education on the Salem campus. Cindy Todd, instructor of nursing Springfield campus. Bill Truscott, assistant professor of sociology. <laughs> <laughs> We all feel we know you better already. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Wheatley, instructor of nursing. Chris Wiley, instructor of behavioral sciences on the Springfield campus. Chris really is here. But. Ron Wilkin, assistant professor of Pradia. Thank you all so much. <laughs>
found on the web this blog by a fellow named Pastor Terry Huggy. I don't know him, but I like what he had to say. And so let me read this to you. In many ways, the body of Christ might be called Philadelphia. We're the city of brotherly love. We're the, in that Christ loves us as our elder brother. We are also the city of brotherly love, and that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We have the same Father. We have been born again by the same Spirit. We have the same elder brother. We are headed for the same destiny, and we'll spend eternity together in our Father's house. It was Christ's intention that there would be no relationship on earth as special as his relationship with his followers and that they have with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia So, you know, always the question comes, okay, we got this brotherly kindness or brotherly love kind of thing. You know, how do we do it? Well, our best answer book takes us back to the scripture. So, 1 Thessalonians says, Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you're doing. So here we are at the beginning of the semester, and I can say to our new faculty, Jennifer, Angela, Chris, Phil, we can do this! <laughs> and, let, and let me help you. Okay? Um, so, we encourage one another and build one another up. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Faculty mentors, help those new faculty. Let us spur one another to love and good deeds. Take special care of them in their first year. That's encouraging one another to love and good deeds. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ is also forgiving you. Um, anybody in here happen to think that you agree with every other person in the room on every other thing? <laughs> yeah, probably not. Um, I've heard the thing where two or more Baptists gather in his name, we have three opinions. <laughs>
and then you have them practice it right away, right? Talk about how to do it, have them think about it, you have them practice it right away. So, um, pick it up your phone to remind you to do it. <laughs> um, the, the point is, there's, there's all kinds of things, and some are small things. I was having a bad day last week, and my secretary handed me something, physically handed me a piece of mail, and I just stood there evidently for like five seconds looking at it, not really sure what to do with it. And she took it back out of my hands and she says, I'll just hold this for you till you're ready for it, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that was an act of brotherly kindness. <laughs> it was, so sometimes it's a small thing. It's, re it's remembering, you know, they talk about in psychology, close relationships. Remember to say hello and goodbye to your spouse. Well, say hello and goodbye to your colleagues when you come in for the day and when you leave for the day. It doesn't have to end up in a long conversation, just bye, see you tomorrow. Never mind you, hey, we're connected. <laughs> we're connected. <coughs> so I'm going to ask my sister Julie to help us with an act of brotherly love. Um, we're going to sing together a, what I hope is a familiar hymn. Yeah, Julie reminds me of my else. She didn't know this until yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> this is Let's Be the Tie That Binds.
uh, some of the basics, but uh, because there's a lot of faculty involvement in this process, we wanted to give you a little bit uh, more detail regarding the timeline and what we hope to accomplish each semester. Um, we have already had one cycle of evidence collection uh, last spring and over the summer, and uh, that evidence is, has been made available to everyone on the teams. And so uh, we will be taking some time here soon at an upcoming meeting to review the evidence that we have uh, for primarily two purposes, to see what additional evidence we may need and to gauge where we are on the, um, in being able to say whether or not we're meeting those components uh, well or not. And so if there are areas of concern, starting to discuss those and address those. Um, the second round of evidence then will, will be this fall. And so uh, again, as I mentioned this morning, if you're a, a part of that, meaning someone asks you for evidence related to your program or uh, you know, a club that you sponsor or anything related to your work, please uh, try to meet those deadlines. We've encouraged our team members to give at least a month to respond. So we want, we're trying to be sensitive to, to you and the fact that a quick turnaround is not always possible. But at the same time, we ask that you respond to those deadlines because uh, we really need to finish the data collection this semester. So the second round of data collection this semester. Um, each criterion has a word limit, uh, or actually our overall portal for HLC has a word limit, and so it's a very different approach than the self-study that we used to do, uh, and so uh, our analysis needs to be somewhat succinct. And so we'll be giving each criterion a word limit so that we're distributing those out um, and encouraging the team leaders or members, depending on how the team is set up and who's writing for each team, to be uh, aware of those uh, word limits and follow those so that the document that we get isn't way over uh, our allotted word limits. And the, there are due dates for the drafts in the spring semester. So that our, our goal is to have um, the teams feel good about their drafts by, by next summer, the beginning of next summer. So that Bob and I can have a great summer uh, editing uh, all of those uh, criteria and so that when we come back for the fall we have a solid uh, really a final draft that we can then share even though this is being done electronically there's a way we can save it like as a, as a document to give to you so that you can review it and, and sort of see what our pseudo self-study uh, says uh, as part of the preparation for the visit in November. And that way we can spend uh, the fall really focusing on the visit uh, and the, the logistics of the visit, preparing the campus for the visit, rather than still be working on the actual you know, an argument and analysis. Um, and the visit is November 16th and 17th of 2015. Okay. Which really isn't that far away. So that's what we're just going to keep saying. Uh, even if it feels that way, we're just going to keep saying it's not. Um, it's going to be a great Thanksgiving 2015. I'm already planning that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, well, I, I already have a list for that Thanksgiving. So questions that we can help answer. I think there's one thing I would like to add. This is a totally different approach from the ones we've done over the last. I've been involved. This is my third one now. And you know, usually it's this massive writing and all of that. The key is the evidence. The key is loading. They have a really nice portal where we just load documents in there and then we refer to that. So we don't have to, you know, we refer to those pieces of evidence that prove. But like Allison said this morning, the other key is if we're not needing something, we need to address that as well. This is the whole purpose of accreditation is to get better. And so if we are doing something, we're not doing something as much as we need to, we need to know about it. We don't need to hide that away. We don't need to shellac over that. We need to bring that up, and we need to be able to address that in a timely manner to at least get a plan in place to do that, because that really is the purpose of all of this. So, uh, you know, it's not just you know, trying to say, oh, we're a wonderful great and all that. Nobody's wonderful great and all that. We all know there's, there's rough spots. So how do we get those out? How do we address and deal with those? That's really the key. Uh, just one thing. Oh, yeah. 
something that's good because in a timely manner doesn't mean that we scramble and fix it before they come. It means that we make a plan to address it. And if that plan means that we can have something in place before the visit, that's great. But it's not to uh, polish everything in that sense before they come, but to really uh, show them where we are and what our plans are for improvement. Allison, this morning Jason took us to the Fort Ole Trace through some drop downs and he made reference to um, there were templates available for this and that. Are those related to this? No. Um, that, that's for the strategic plan for your particular unit within your college. And so each, I think, college on the academic side is going to be producing their own strategic plan representing all the different areas, and so there's the template for what that final plan should look like. So will those come down to the deans and then to the local levels? I think that's the plan, yes. Okay. Thank you. And those will, of course, be part of our documents <coughs> that HLC will be looking for. Other questions? Well, thank you for uh, to all the um, people who are serving as team leaders and team members. We really appreciate it. And for those of you who are pro uh, providing documentation, we're really working hard to try and figure out if the if the documentation exists in a way that we can get it and not bug people. And so, if we if we are asking for documentation, we haven't figured out another way to get it. And so, that's that's our our goal uh, because a lot of this already exists through our technological systems if we can just query and find it. So we're trying to use that method as much as we can. So segueing into the next topic on the um, workshop agenda, I want to uh, share with you and encourage you to pick up one of the, these lovely colored um, uh, handouts that are at each door. So if you didn't get one on your way in, make sure you grab one on the way out. Um, but it uh, gives some of the opportunities for professional development um, over the course of this year. A couple of these, uh, well the Free Lunch Journal Club is specific to the Bolivar Campus because it's an on-site uh, journal club and the fall dates and times are there. All of the um, articles have been selected, they're all idea papers from the Idea Center. And so uh, I will have those posted on the portal about a week before the journal club meetings and whether you actually attend and have free lunch and great discussion or whether you just read those on your own, just encourage you to do that. Um, another opportunity is teachers camp. We held teachers camp this past Monday. We had 15 faculty there. Uh, so and it was, it, it, I think it went well. Um, Duke and I lead uh, teachers camp and we've had requests to develop a teachers camp too. So kind of taking some of the concepts either deeper or some of the concepts we introduced but don't have time to cover it all into a follow up, uh, a second series. So we'll be offering that uh, in January, January 19th. Um, and so, and then food's provided, I'm just gonna throw that out there uh, at these events. Um, so come, if anything, just for the food. Um, but if you have ideas that you would like to see us cover at Teachers Camp 2, we're very open to those. We're, we are working on the development of it. We have some ideas of stuff we're gonna cover, but it's not yet set in stone. So if you have ideas, feel free to share that with me or with Duke. And there's the back side, so if you still look on the back side of the document, there's um, the, the book club, the new or not so new faculty book club. So we offered this last fall, and I had budgeted for, a, I don't remember, half as many people as actually signed up. And so uh, we had, let me rephrase that, twice as many people as anticipated joined the book club, which was great. Um, and so I ended up using the whole year's budget of books for just the fall book club, so there was no spring book club. So this year I reallocated, I have more in that um, uh, budget line, and guess what's already happened? <laughs> it's doubled again. So we opened it up to adjuncts, and we have, um, we have about 25 people already signed up, 18 of whom are adjuncts, which I think is fantastic. This book is called On Course. The subtitle is um, a uh, week-by-week -week guide to your first semester of college teaching. And as I shared last time, it really, isn't just for new faculty, and we have some great ideas that um, I think would be benefit, beneficial no matter how many years you've been teaching. And I would really encourage it, if you're a mentor to a new faculty as well, that it would be a great source for uh, you and your men mentee to go through uh, together, or at least have as a basis of discussion. So if you're interested, 
Um, I have a couple of books here and um, a whole nother set of books on order that should arrive any time. And so let me know you're interested. You can tell me today. I'll, if I have a book, I'll hand it to you and write your name down. And if not, um, I'll write your name down. Or you can email me and let me know you're interested and I'll get a book to you. The way this works is there's 15 chapters, one for each um, week of the semester, as if we have 15 weeks. And um, the, the, the topics go through the semester uh, in, in a way that makes sense. So I mean, the first week is about the first week of classes. Uh, there's, a, there's a chapter partway through about, you're probably getting sick of this by now, and you need to be re-energized, and so do your students. So how to re-energize your class. Uh, then there's, you know, how to do prepare for finals. Uh, there's one long, it's keeping up with grading. So it's strategic with where you are in the semester. And the level of commitment is that you read the book. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not going to be quizzing you. So I just, you read the book. And then I send you weekly emails with some book highlights, but also trying to connect you to the SBU specific information. So a uh, reminder of five week grades are due next week. You know, those kinds of, um, those kinds of reminders. And so you get the email, and then if you if you want to go beyond minimal expectation, you can just hit reply on occasion and say, I like this idea, Allison. And then I'm happy, and you've gone above and beyond and feel good about yourself, and we call that the book club. Okay? Um, any questions about those opportunities? Yes. Oh. <laughs> she wants a book. Oh, um, energizing thing of feels. <laughs> oh, oh, great, day one, you need energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just as a reminder for um, tomorrow from 1 to 2, the department chairs are meeting with our guest, Susan Hatfield. That's in this room. I'm not sure if I told the chairs up there today. And then uh, the faculty meeting uh, workshop on Friday morning from 8.30 to 10.30 is also in this room with Susan Hatfield. And, uh, do you want me to tell a little bit about her? Okay. Um, she's from Winona State, uh, and she has served as a department chair. She's a professor of communication. She has served several years as a department chair, not currently, but in the past. She's also served as director of institutional effectiveness as a, as a co-role as well with her faculty role. And so she has um, great experience that makes her and a great personality and uh, scholarship. She's a fantastic speaker. Uh, when we go to HLC, the conference, which is as much of a party as it sounds like, um, <laughs> there, are, there are not many sessions that are standing room only. I know that surprises me. <laughs> um, but hers truly are. I mean, the room is packed for her. People stand in the back because she's, she is engaging. Um, she's practical, but she also she's also theory based, and so she combines that all in a way that makes her uh, just really really helpful in um, in learning how to do assessment. And so uh, she'll be here Friday morning, and I think I hope that you'll really enjoy it and gain a lot from it. The timing of this is such that we we've, we've spent two years in uh, over four department chair workshops talking to. And, and working together with and practicing uh, together, the department chairs, on how to do program level assessment. And so Susan is coming to take those concepts and apply them to the course level. So as faculty members of the course, what does this mean for us? And so um, there'll be some, uh, it's really kind of a parallel content set as far as what we've covered with the department chairs, except taking it to the course level. So, I hope you'll be here and I think you'll really enjoy it. And we will be out on time so that we can get to the meet and greet for both. So, thank you. Truly, uh, Susan is, is really uh, dynamic, remarkable. Uh, when our assessment academy began, Jason Vaughn and I went to a first an initial workshop and uh, we were able to meet her. She's <coughs> one of many helpers and people to guide institutions in developing an assessment academy, which we really haven't talked to you all so much about yet. But then, as our assessment team has uh, continued to go to for more training, to more sessions, we were assigned mentors, and the person that we came back saying, oh, I hope Susan Hatfield will be our mentor. And she did seem to adopt us in a bit. Probably every school feels that she adopts them because she's so personable. Even through an electronic means, she really 
is sympathetic to our school and to our needs. And she became our super mentor. She's the mentor above mentors. She's extremely well thought of. She's a nationwide speaker, nationally known speaker. So you will enjoy Susan. And we're just very fortunate. We invited her two years ago to come and be here. And so uh, we're on her schedule. And we're excited. All right. Uh, Bob and Angie are going to come and chat with us. Uh, I just want to say a couple things, and I'm going to turn it over to these two. Um, uh, one thing about uh, coming up, you'll be, those of you that are on year three or this year's faculty and computer rotation, uh, those computers will start going out probably mid-September. Uh, we just got one load in yesterday, so those of you who it's your turn to get a new uh, computer, uh, this year, again, those will start to come out uh, the middle of September or so. And, and again, remember, uh, the student will be coming to your help desk, whoever is going to be doing that. They'll come and they'll have to, you'll have to be there, make an appointment in time to be there with them so they'll be able to trade out your computer and get you set up with your computer and all that. So just wanted to give you a heads up with that. We don't order those computers in the summer. We don't order them until August due to cash flow issues for the summer. So. But we should have all those out and ready to go by the end of September, laptops and desktops, and you know what you chose. The other thing I do want to mention, and, and this is kind of a, uh, there'll be more to come on this, uh, but I wanted to announce it to you and let you know because it's a pretty, pretty great deal. Uh, we have changed virus protection companies. We've moved from Sophos to 34-7. And uh, so we're in the process of uh, all the new computers that are gone out have this virus protection on them, et cetera. They have made a, uh, an offer for us to make an offer to you, I guess really hook you up with them, uh, that they are going to uh, allow you to purchase their virus protection software for $10 a year. That's a really good deal. And they're also going to allow our students to purchase their virus protection for $10 a year. So we're going to be... Uh, working with student life and all that to get that out to students. It'll be on the portal, one for faculty and staff. But basically, it'll be a, a website that you go to, and you will have to use your SVU email so that it will verify that you are an employee of SVU. Uh, but I think that may be something you want to take advantage of. Again, your office computers are all taken care of. This is for your own home personal computers, okay? So I just want you to know. Yes, sir? Is that for how many home computers does that cover? You know, they said. They don't have any real rule on that. That's they said. It's, it's a single license, but how many did you get? They didn't give us any kind of limit, so I think you're, you know, they're just looking to sell it. Yeah, we're, we'll get more info on that because I can't imagine that they ended up on the phone. And again, they may not care about another one itself, so. Uh, but it's very good, and we're very pleased with it. All right. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Neil. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I just wondered if that also is compatible with Mac, or is it just IBM? I don't know the answer to that. I would presume we would be not so far. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'll check and see. All right. Uh, Neil and uh, Angie are going to talk about the instructional technology side, and, uh, uh, and then Angie's going to talk mainly about the Angel to Blackboard conversion that we're going to be working on. So I'll get out of the way and turn it over to him. Hello, everybody. Neil Cross with uh, Instructional Technology. I was with Peggy. Peggy's still around. Now it's here. Um, I'll just cover two quick things before we just focus on the LMS part of it. Uh, as a reminder, instructional technology is involved with video conferencing, so whether you want to do that for your classes or your committee meetings or whatever, let me know and we'll help get that figured out, what we have, what we need to get if you want to do something we don't have the ability to do yet. Uh, so we're definitely involved with video conferencing. Like body classrooms, which almost all of these are, much like this room, that's also instructional technology. If you have any questions, problems, issues with what's in there or not in there, please let me know. We'll get that figured out. I will highlight briefly on all these classroom computers. They come up and already are logged in, so you don't have to log in. This is only if you want your F and G drive files. If you don't want that, don't worry about logging into that. When you're done, all you really need to do is just click restart. So 
whether it's a flash right after you or not, you're there for all nice and fast. That gets you out of everything if you restart the computer, whatever website you're logging in. So we've been working on that for the past couple of years to get this fine tuned where it's a nice, fast, easy process for you to be able to use the computer. So that covers those areas. Search and we default to the search everything. 
this is our discovery service that allows us to search across almost all of our databases. I wish search everything was absolutely accurate, but there are a few databases that do not talk with this system and they refuse to. And, and I'll show you how to find those. Uh, if I'm doing a search for Sleeping Beauty, for example, this is going to search all of our databases and come back with 252,000 items that are available from the various resources that we subscribe to. Um, you can limit this by various things down here on the left. You can go full text only, uh, peer review, catalog, you can select dates, you can select format, you can select locations, you can select a lot of options and narrow that list down. However, it's still going to be overwhelming. There, like I said, there are some databases that do not talk well with this system, and what we've done is listed them here. So if you are looking for nursing content, and you have done a search, and you want more information, you're going to have to search this database separately. <coughs> if you just click on this, it's going to open the database, and you run the search again. Not ideal, but it is what it is, and until the vendors begin to talk to one another well, we deal with this. Um, we go back to the website. What you notice on the front page now is a search box with multiple tabs. So if you want to just search in the catalog, if you click on this tab, you're going to want to search in the catalog. If you want to search Mobius, click on this tab, search Mobius, articles, etc. Down here under course reserves, this has been available in our catalog for a long time. We've never highlighted it, and I thought, you know, it might be interesting for you. So if you are in the communication area and you want to see what's on reserve right now, this moment, you can put in your designator and it'll come back and show you what's on reserve in this area. If we go back to this page, you can actually change this to your name. So if I put in my name, you're going to find I have nothing on reserve. <laughs> and I can tell you, hey, you should appear here, but you don't. If you are Renee Waters, sorry Renee, I'm picking on your hair a little bit, you find the things that she has on reserves for FAR 1003. Uh, if you click on that, it's going to give you a list of everything she has on reserve. So if you have things on reserve and you want to know if they're active, they're out there and they're ready for students, you can come and select this and find it yourself. You can call us, we'll do the same thing for you, but it's really right there available for you. Um, library hours. One of the things students told us very vocally is they could not find out when we were open from our website. We thought it was very intuitive. They said it was not. So we put it up front in their face. So it's right here. You can select which campus you are at and it will tell you when the library is open. If you really, as faculty, want to know when we're open during the semester, you can go to the library hours, you can select the location and bring up the library hours for the <coughs> semester. So these are our general operating hours. If you go to the bottom of the page, you get a calendar that says exactly when we're open every day of the semester. One of the big changes that we've made this year in our hours is um, changing our operating hours for Sunday. We used to be open from 1.30 to 5 and 8.30 to 11. What we were finding was students were very concerned about having to get up and leave the library and come back. And so what we have done is change our hours from those to being open from 3 until 11. So we're open a consistent uh, eight hour period. Personal librarians. I want to talk about the personal librarians. And I'll find it here in a second. If you look, click on this link, you will find a list. Yes, you will find the list. Thank you. Of all of the personal librarians for your college uh, listed here. If you don't know them by now, here they are, except for me, I'm off the screen. Um, what, what are the personal librarians responsible for doing for you? Well, each one of them has a budget to buy materials for your department. So if you want to buy something that gets put in the library, contact your personal librarian. The 
probably already have contacted you uh, at some point. Also, if you want information instruction, if you want a librarian to come into your classroom and teach students how to use information, how to find information, contact your personal librarian. They will set that up for you. Research guides. Uh, the library has a set of uh, research guides that is available for you, and the librarian will help you set this up. So this is a list of all of the research guides, and right now there's 105 of these, I think. But if you open up one of these, I think I'm going to pick on chemistry for a moment. What you find here is, well, Colleen Rose is the personal librarian for chemistry, and this particular class, she has worked with the chemistry department to set up all of these tabs that have information. So inorganic chemistry, if you click on that, eventually going to do something. There it is. It's going to give you a lot of information for your students. You can work with a personal librarian to set up everything that goes on this page. In fact, we can give you access to create things on this page. So if you want to set up a information area specific to a class, specific to a department, specific to anything you should want, no, that's not true. Uh, specific to a class or a department, contact your personal librarian and they'll help you set that up. Chat sessions. We started chat sessions a couple of years ago. Um, and if you go to any page on the library's website, not, not within the, um, well, it is too good in there. There is this link here to do a chat online. Students are really starting to get into this. Right now, since all of the librarians are here, there is no one to answer a chat session. <laughs> if somebody was online, if they were sitting at their desk, they would be online. And there would be a chat box that appears here, and, it's, and you can just start typing, and it will come right to one of the librarians. One of the librarians will answer that question. Right now, you know, I've said this is really growing for us. When we look at our stats, our in-person reference is still off the charts compared to this. So right now we run about, uh, Susan, help, help me remind me, um, where are you, Susan? I'm hiding. Oh. <laughs> we run about 1,300 chats last year. About 1,300 chats last year online. So we talked with about 1,300 different students throughout the year online. We had over 20,000 in-person reference questions. Okay. So the students, even though they, they say the technology brand, they still want the face to face. Couple of other things. Mogus uh, continues to expand. So if you do a search on Mogus, well, I'm going to search our catalog for, for sleeping mm -hmm. oh, okay. I get nervous up here and can't type. So if I do a search on our catalog, you're going to get a search results page, and this is one of the things that I'm frustrated with Mobius right now, is it takes too long to get this page. There are three new major alliances that Mobius has established. One is with the Colorado Alliance. It's an alliance of libraries, academic and public libraries in Colorado. So, if you go to this page, and you find that we have 82 books or 82 items on Sleeping Beauty, and when you go out to Mobius and run the same search, you find that there is uh, 1,400 items. You can also go and click on this button right here that says Prospector and run the same search for Colorado. How long does it take to get something from Colorado? Mobius tells us four to six days. So if a student requests something from our Colorado Alliance, they will get it here in our building in four to six days. They've also created an alliance with Tulsa City County Library. They are in this uh, Mobius search box. You do not have to go back out to, um, once you 
once you run this search in Mobius, you're actually getting data from Tulsa City County. It takes it about four days to get it from them. Anywhere else in Mobius, it's three days, is what they tell us. Sometimes we don't see that. Um, and then finally, they added Park University and Kansas City uh, as another Mobius member. So right now, students have, through Mobius, over 19 million books that they can request and have sent to us just from Mobius, excluding the other alliances. The other alliances add another 14 million. So quite a lot of content that your students can get quickly and easily through Mobius. A couple of final things, just kind of stats-wise. Um, one of the things that, that libraries, to indicate how fast libraries are changing, five years ago, whenever we started talking about how many e-books we have versus how many books we have, overwhelmingly we had significantly higher number of print books than we had e-books. Today we have about 184,000 print books and about 265,000 e-books. So we have already made the digital crossover. We're more of a digital library than we are an analog library today. In fact, we subscribe to 114 print journals and 335,000 electronic journals. So if your student walks in and says, I didn't find anything on this, <laughs> have them come talk to us. <laughs> And then the last thing I'll, I'll mention is the SBU collection. Last year, we began a collection called SBU in the library, and we collect things that our faculty and staff publish, our students publish, our alumni publish. So if you run across something, or you yourself publish something, we'd like to know about it. So that we can edit the collection. Questions? Yes. The, the SBU collection, it's, it's in the uh, Joyce Sells Heritage System. Oh. Yeah. Repository is a different statement. Right. No other questions I have. Yes, prepare at 4.15 and it literally happens at 
4.30, so, so please be there. Then Friday morning, we will have refreshments, uh, coffee and juice bar at 8 o'clock. That will happen in this building, so we'll have refreshments right out here. And then 8.30, we begin with Susan in this room. And then on to the meet and greets. Uh, I'm assuming that the deans have told you all where the meet and greets should be. Any announcing that needs to happen about that right now? Just a lot. <laughs> okay. And I'm assuming that the deans and the department chairs have communicated with you all when your college and department meetings will occur. Is that true? I've suggested a time, but usually the deans don't follow my suggestions. <laughs> I, I don't know when that was actually proper, which is fine. Okay. Um, now we we are we are very blessed to have um, such active faculty members when it comes to professional development and scholarly activities. It's amazing the uh, many contributions that our faculty make to, to research and to their own personal development. We have funds available at the provost level and at department and chair levels. So as you are interested in doing uh, um, professional development trips or presentations, please uh, follow the instructions that will be provided by the Scholarly Activity Committee and also talk to your chair and your dean about possible funds that are available there. Uh, today we have 10 people who will be presenting poster presentations for us. Uh, this will be in the back hallway of this building and we'll have nice refreshments there that Allison has assured me will be there by, we're hoping that they'll be here by two. Okay, we're doing good. Uh, so please, in, please uh, attend that, enjoy that time chatting with those folks about where, where they've gone and what they've done. Um, I've decided to just kind of tuck all of this together and end at this point with us going to the poster presentations. And then we have uh, Faculty Senate later this afternoon. So, Terry, since we're running so far ahead. Is three enough time for everybody? Oh, yes, I think so. So we'll have an hour of poster presentations and refreshment and then enjoying each other's company and back in this room. Oh, thank you. Perry, chat with us. Yeah, I was going to say, Perry, what is it? Yes. At the same time, we're having our wonderful poster session in the same hall. We have two of the brand new labs that just were renovated. Dr. Taylor's mentioned and talked about the physics lab and the zoology lab. And so if you go to the back hall and you go to the right, I guess that's east, um, the physics labs back there, we've got a bunch of experiments set up. You can see the organization, including, um, there's quite a bit, and it's uh, all new furniture and new equipment and all kinds of stuff. And then to the left, to the west, is the zoology lab. Um, and I'm, uh, Dr. Siegfried has got a bunch of stuff for it. Or at least it's open and ready. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's a very big difference between where the two labs look. You know, one's very, Physical and you want biological, so um, there's a difference in our friends. We really pretty much have the same way each of us, and we really approach it very, very soon. So, but please come by, we'll be there, available, you can check out. We have some experiments set up if you want to see some. Which room has the laser set up? <laughs> I don't have a laser set up, but I can get one set up. I mean, we got tons of them in the business. I do have radioactive material We are very proud of our Yes. Okay, and then another uh, professional development opportunity is sabbaticals. We have senior and junior sabbaticals, and so the trustees have. Uh, given us the ability to have one junior and one senior sabbatical each year approved. And unfortunately, there have been many years when we have not had applicants for those positions. And those opportunities are simply gone. 
you know, we can't suddenly have six in a year. We have two possibilities in a year. And this year, we have two senior sabbaticals, two applications, and we were able to take care of those. So Rodney Reeves is here. What are you here about, huh? You're on sabbatical. <laughs> you told me I had to be here. <laughs> Brotherly love that we develop between this group. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 